Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out top 10 modern British bands to crack the US. Looks like the states are facing another British invasion. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 modern British bands to crack the US. For this list, we'll be ranking a more recent crop of British groups who have seen crossover success amongst American audiences. Bring me the horizon. We'll be focusing I haven't heard on of them. recent bands only, specifically the 1990s and onwards, making this list one with eyes okay. set firmly on the here and now. Okay. Muse, of course. Number 10, Alt J. Maybe there's something in the Leeds water that makes the quirky art pop of Alt J resonate so much with an international audience. Or maybe it's just this young British band's determination to release honest, unique music to their fan base. Whatever the reason, there's hmm. no denying that the three full length albums and number of TV and film soundtrack appearances have done Alt J wonders in breaking through an American crowd. And it doesn't seem as if the trio are going to be resting on their creative laurels anytime soon. I've never heard of Alt J. Ever. Alt J. Three dudes from Leeds. Alt J comes from the key sequence used to generate the symbol triangle on an Apple Mac computer. Alt J. Really? Oh, I don't have an Alt button. I have an Option button. Is it Option J? <gasps> it worked. They should be called Option J. I've not heard of them. I kind of like what I was hearing though. This is different. Number nine, the 1975. Don't go expecting any classic rock bombast or psychedelic grooves with this Manchester-based act. Instead, the 1975 create a grooving and highly danceable combination of pop, dance and rock sounds, which has managed to earn them huge accolades both at home and abroad. There's a strong sense of songwriting knowledge when it comes to the music of the 1975, which often hits home with huge stadium-ready hooks and a super clean production style, both modern and somewhat retro in tone, the 1975 won a Brit Award in 2017 for Best British Group, so it looks like their story of success has just begun. I have heard of these guys uh, because they played on Saturday Night Live, I think. But I didn't know they were British. That is a good sound. It's like techno rock, kind of. Good for them. Way to go. Lawrence and the Machine. Number 8, Florence and the Machine. I didn't know they were British. There's an indescribable amount of beauty permeating the music of Florence and the Machine. Perhaps this is why the London-based group has managed to connect so strongly with fans both in the UK and US. Front woman Florence Welch's magnetic presence is evident both on the stage and in the studio. Musically, the machine combines sound and imagery like few others, from classical to modern indie pop and rock styles. Indeed, there's no categorizing Florence and the Machine and that's probably exactly how they like it. Definitely heard of Florence and the Machine. I feel like they had a couple hits maybe 10 years ago or so over here. I didn't know they were British. This is my impression of Florence. Hello! How's that? Mumford and Son is British? Number seven, Mumford and Sons. Folky, rootsy, Americana music performed by a group of born and bred Londoners? What? More likely than you think. There's a beautiful element to the music of Mumford & Sons, as well as a certain nostalgia which seems to connect with music fans from all walks of life. The spirits of songwriters past seem to live and breathe within the old school arrangements and melodies within the band's songwriting. While they've changed <laughs> up their look and sound recently, it's their original combination of past and present which likely led to Mumford & Sons being one of Britain's most popular rock exports. What in the world? I did not know Mumford & Sons was British. This blows my mind because it's such redneck, bluegrassy kind of music with the banjo. British people don't know about the banjo, or I used to think that. Now I think they're banjo experts. This British guy knows more about the banjo than I do. John Lennon started playing music through banjo. So what am I talking about? Wow. Now that I think of it, the name Mumford and Sons is very British. Good for you guys. You did it. Muse. Oh, yeah. Number six, Muse. Devon's Muse have managed to achieve the nearly impossible. They've managed to upgrade progressive rock to sound sleek, sexy, and oh so cool. Of course, it wasn't all smooth sailing for this group since they're forming back in the mid-90s, but albums such as 2003's Absolution and particularly Black yeah. Holes and Revelations from 2006 wow. succeeded in giving Muse some big-time hits across the pond. That was 20 years ago? 
Of course, it helps that guitarist and vocalist Matt Bellamy also happens to be one of the most passionate and dynamic frontmen around, pushing Muse ever forward as a leader in Britain's dynamic rock scene. Yeah, I used to love Muse. I can't believe those albums came out 20 years ago. That blows my mind. It sounds so futuristic still. I remember the first time I heard Muse, I think it was a song from Absolution, and the bass was really distorted. I was impressed by that, because at that time, you didn't really hear bass guitar that distorted at the time. And I feel like they incorporated like heavy metal and techno in a really musical way. And the vocals are like queen level. Each one of them is an excellent musician, and the songwriting's good. Muse, yeah. Hell yeah. Gorillas. Number five, Gorillas. If the world of holograms and virtual reality is the next big thing for the music industry, then we can all thank this one-of-a-kind group for being an early pioneer in the medium. Gorillas broke the mold of traditional artists when they were created as a virtual band back in 1998 by Blur frontman Damon Albarn and artist Jamie Hewlett. The band members are entirely fictional, with a fascinating backstory and imaginary universe to their credit. Meanwhile, the trippy, infectious music of Gorillaz is created in the studio by Albon and has featured many high-profile contributors in the past, including famed MC Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Yo, the Gorillaz, what a great idea for a band. Great songs. I actually recorded something for them maybe over 10 years ago. I used to be, I'm going to name drop here, I used to be Andre 3000's personal engineer. I would go to his personal studio at his house and record him. And one of the things I recorded was a guest spot on a Gorilla song, but I don't think it was ever released. Let me just see. Gorillas Andre 3000. Oh. What? Is this it? Wait a minute. Holy crap, it came out. Yeah, you know, I worked on this. I recorded. <laughs> I didn't think it came out, but it totally did. It's called Do Your Thing. Yeah. Well, what do you know? I worked with gorillas, y'all. We never met, though. We just sent them the file. I knew they'd end up on this Number list. Four, Oasis. The crux of Oasis is the Gallagher brothers, Noel and Liam, particularly their highly combustible working relationship. Oasis thrived despite interpersonal struggles, however, thanks to a series of ridiculously popular singles. Wonderwall, Don't Look Back in Anger, and Champagne Supernova were all radio mega hits, hinging upon Noel's jangling layered guitar work and Liam's nasal, yet undeniably captivating vocals. Oasis may have worn their influences on their sleeve, but that didn't stop them yes, they from did. becoming an international success story in the process. I liked Oasis the first time I heard them when they were called The Beatles. I've made my opinions about Oasis very clear on this channel, so we're just going to move on. Keep it happy and positive. What? Number three, Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> I didn't know they were British. I didn't realize Arctic Monkeys were British. I thought they were from New York. They sound like they're from New York. The music does. I've never heard them speak. Sheffield makes an appearance on our list thanks to the cross-country appeal of one of the area's most popular groups, Arctic Monkeys. Hey, look at his drum set. He's thanks got a... The cross -country appeal Look at that Ringo drum set he's got. Two cymbals, the Black Oyster Pearl, Ludwig drums. Nice. The band's sound is a callback to stripped-down garage rock, while at the same time possessing a smooth production style and a hefty dose of indie cool. Somehow, Arctic Monkeys seem to effortlessly switch between pop and rock underground hooks. Perhaps it's this delicate balancing act which keeps fans in the UK and US coming back again and again for a shot of the band's intriguing sound. I need to check them out more. I've never, I don't think I've ever intentionally listened to Arctic Monkeys, but I like what I've heard. I need to check them out. I thought they were from New York. Oh, right, right, right. Number two, Coldplay. The Almost forgot stop. they existed. Referring to Coldplay as England's answer to U2 simply isn't giving this London-born band their proper due when it comes to their level of success. Sure, we may hear the music of Coldplay nearly everywhere we go, on television or on the radio adverts, but taking a step back, it's easy to see how Chris Martin and co. have connected with so many people. There's an honesty to the band's songwriting and a passionate believability in Martin's vocals, which has made Coldplay one of the most successful British bands in years. And that is no accident. Yeah, I don't mind Coldplay so much. 
They do have a UQ, a UQ, a UQ vibe, a U2 vibe. I never really thought of that. It's the delay on the guitar and the reverb on the drums and the bass going a ga 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 and the vocals going eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee